Hi, welcome back to another video. A little bit of a different one this week. In August, I've decided to sign up for a really big challenge in the Lake District, and it's Summerton Held Ellen 9.2 times in 48 hours, which is basically the height of Everest. I'm not going to be doing it alone. I'm doing it in a team of four with three other well-known YouTubers. I'm doing it with Paul Mesner, Al from Bushman and Blue, and Andy from Backpacking UK. You've seen me and Andy do the on before. So yeah, there's four of us taking part in this challenge. I was asked to do an interview last week just to talk about why I'd signed up for the challenge and a little bit of my background, how I got into hiking, and I wanted to share it. So I've edited it, stuck it on the end of this video, and I hope you enjoy it. I have put chapters below in case you want to skip to certain questions, but I thought it was an interesting interview and I wanted to share it with you. If you want the details about the event, I'll leave them below, and Tim does mention more about it at the end. But yeah, um, I hope you enjoy the video. Hey everybody, welcome to the next instalment of the Apex interview series. I'm Tim Britton, your head of community. If you haven't joined us before, Apex is the first challenge of its kind here in the UK where we are challenging you to scale your own Everest. We challenge you to climb the Helvellyn Peak in the Lake District 9.2 times to accumulate the total height of Mount Everest in a 48 hour window. Sounds a bit daunting, right? But don't worry, because it might be that your Everest is just making one summit. It might be four summits. It's completely up to you. That's the goal of what the Apex Challenge is all about. But what we're doing here and now is we're kind of coming behind the scenes and we're introducing you to the community. We're letting you get to meet all the different types of people that are going to be on that adventure with you. And it is an adventure that we're going to be doing. And there is no better individual to talk to than the guy we're going to be speaking to tonight, which is the wonderful Chris Gleave. Now, it's great to have you on. It's an amazing opportunity because like, I, I love watching and looking at all of your, your YouTube that you've got and your Instagram account and stuff. Because number one, we're going to probe about your pictures because you're, you're a photographer and a vid videographer kind of by trade, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, always done it all my life. So we're going to definitely start asking you some questions about how we take better pictures up mountains because mine never look as good as you. Let's kind of dive in because you you absolutely love hiking. It's a huge part of, I suppose, your life now, but you started hiking with quite a bang. So I'm right in saying that your first hike was not only quite a challenging hike, but you decided to do it up Snowdon, the highest mountain that we have in England and Wales, and you decided to go up there as your first hike. So maybe you could let us know how that came about. Many, many years ago, a couple of lads from work said, right, we've got this challenge and we're going to climb Ben Nevis in six weeks' time or seven weeks' time. Do I want to do it? I was like, no, you know, I, I don't hike. I was talking to him for you know a few days, and in the end, I agreed, go on, I'll, I'll have a go at the challenge. So because I'd never hiked before, I literally went out that weekend, I bought some <laughs> top of the range boots, pants, all the gear, no idea. And the following week, I went up Snowdon with one of the lads, just up the Clamberries Path. I know it's a tourist route, but I'm telling you, it's still steep. It's a long slog as well. It's nine miles. I must admit, I found it tough. Um, you know, my legs okay. were killing me. Not used to doing that, but really, really got the buzz for it. Okay. Two weeks later, I did it again. I did it um, with, with, with another friend at the time, thinking I'll do a little bit of training. And then two weeks after that was the big one, Ben Nevis. So we drove to Ben Nevis. I got there a day early. I had a nice little relax. And on the day, admittedly, I found it really, really tough at the time. I think this was back in 2009. They summited about 40 minutes before me. I was lagging behind. There was snow up there. But I absolutely loved it. It was the best experience. And it literally gave me the the passion for hiking and when i ca when i came down i think it took a couple of weeks just to just to settle in and mm -hmm. finally i decided to sign up for kilimanjaro nine months late to, to do that in nine months i've got a son my son was very ill at the time and i thought what a great way to raise some money for charity so yeah i signed up for kilimanjaro and all that was the start of my hiking journey <laughs> that often tends to be the thing doesn't it we 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 try something we get the bug for it and then we we make that huge leap. Well, there's two camps. There's the one camp of people that go, well, I'll just I'll just do a 5K. I'll just do those little runs. And then there's the other people that go, I'm just going to bypass the marathon and I'm going to go to an ultra. And that's kind of what you've done. You decided Kilimanjaro. And, that, and, and you know, I think it's phenomenal. When you were raising money for charity, weren't you? Was, was it the Manchester Children's Hospital? Yeah, the Manche yeah, that was for the Kilimanjaro, Manchester Children's Hospital at the time, yeah, for the uh, Children's Oncology Department, which was, okay. which was great, obviously, in a good cause. Have you done lots of charity kind of other events and stuff before have you done it for different charities has that always been a bit of a driver for you or do you do it more for the kind of the the, the personal um fulfillment you get well i do it for myself i have raised quite a lot of money over the years for the same charity as i say okay. you know they looked after my son so i've done it a lot for them 
But I've done things like, you know, I, I used to do a lot of obstacle races. Mm-hmm. You name it, I've done it. And I've done some of them multiple times, you know, survival of the fittest, t- tough mudder, rough runner, hell runner, okay. uh, badass mucker. I've, I've done them all. And some of those I did, I, I raised money just like generally, but not for a specific event. I just used okay. to throw myself in. And every week or every two weeks, I used to do a little bit of a challenge, whether it be a 10K, 5K. I used to turn up in fancy dress. You know, I'd turn up to a run, everyone's in proper running gear, vests, you know, all very professional. And I'm turning up in in a <laughs> in a curly wig and a, and a tutu. Whatever. So what was your wear. best fancy dress outfit? It, probably one of the tutus. I, I just put it online to say, I'm going to do this charity run. Has anyone got anything they want me to wear? I had bright pink, blue, curly wigs. Um, I've had sl- slitted glasses running in those, all of it. And I've turned up <laughs> and nobody else dress and have said, are you here to raise money for charity? I'm like, no, just, you know, just something different. <laughs> this is just me out for a Sunday stroll. I just happened upon this <laughs> event and thought I'd join in. Uh, obviously, you've, you've got the bug for it now because you, you love wild camping as well. So when did the wild camping element to kind of this adventure or the, this hot sort of hiking love come in? That's come in more recently. So I've always liked the idea of it. But as a kid, I never really went camping. I think okay. Kilimanjaro was my first proper camp. And then I'd probably say in the last three years, three or three to four years. And that's with, um, I made a decision to stop watching TV. I don't watch TV, don't listen to the radio, anything like that. But I watch YouTube. I ended up watching things I was passionate about. So, you know, photography, videography and hiking. And people like Paul Mesner, I used to watch their videos. Yeah. They'd hide, they'd wild camp. And I used to think, you know, that's, I'm missing out really. That's something I'd, I think I'd like to do. So I bought myself some very basic gear at first and then, I've kind of built it up from there and I absolutely love it. I love a massive hike, you know, pushing yourself in a day, get up early, finish. And now I'm starting to enjoy, let's go out a little bit later in the day or hike somewhere far, get on a summit, get a lovely view, hike, yeah. camp, cook some food. Oh, I love it. All right. So this is the question as well, because some people, because some of the pictures you put out, so like recently on some of your socials have been beautiful, breathtaking mountain tops the snow the views and then i see your tent and i'm like oh and then i saw the picture with you kind of had like the tent door open and stuff and it it looks so cozy inside there and i was thinking (laughs) is it really just as is it true what they say like there is no such thing as bad weather just bad clothing is it the same like with your camping gear are you can you be cozy up on the top of a mountain in the snow yeah, do you know what? And the, and it depends what you say by cosy. So, for example, on my recent pictures, yeah, I've got the door open, the snow, it looks be- white, you know, the sun's just rising, it looks beautiful. What you can't see is like the 50 mile an hour winds that were battering me at the time. Um, <laughs> but you've got the, you've obviously got to have the right gear to be able to get there. Uh, then you want don't want to be cold. That's another thing to look at. But the other thing is, are you going to, is your tent going to, survive and i think if you've got a decent tent or a tent that you rely on or you've tested you're Mm -hmm. you are comfy and cozy because you're you're not worried that you know is a peg going to come out is it going to get i'm going to get blown off the mountain so that comes your security first then you learn to get your right layers so you're nice and warm and then it is enjoyable don't get me wrong if you're then freezing and the tent's battering and you're wondering what's going on it's not a nice place to be (laughs) Yeah, I've got good gear you now for over the years. I've, you know, I've learned what works for me. Like one of the great things about these interviews we're doing is it gives us an opportunity to kind of go off on all these different tangents. And you've done some seriously long hiking because you did, you did coast to coast as well, didn't you? You've done 192 miles coast to coast. That was kind of on on a whim. Um, not not too long before that, I did the Yorkshire Three Peaks. Now I've never done anything like that before. I've okay. done hikes and i do the you know i might do seven way rights in a day or i do these routes or 10 in a day or four in a day i do these routes but i'd never done anything of of distance out of the blue i did the yorkshire three peaks i decided two days before to do it bought some lightweight trainers and i thought or hiking trainers i did that and i found it tough you know i did it i did it in eight hours 51 but by the end of it and i ran for some of it by the end of it my legs were in bits and and it was only not so long after that i decided I want to do like a long distance hike. And I was actually looking at the Pennine Way, uh, which is even further. It's 265 miles, I think. And I I kind of decided at the last minute, it's a little bit bleak up there. There's not much to see. So, oh, I'll have a look at the coast to coast. Binge watch loads of everyone's videos on YouTube. And I basically just just decided to do it. So, you know, even like this challenge that we're doing now, this Apex, I've never done anything like this before. 
but I'd never done the coast to coast before. So all of a sudden I've gone from the furthest I've ever walked is 42K in one day once for the Orcs Three Peaks. And then I signed up and did the coast to coast, which was over. I finished it on the morning of the 11th day. And it was, you know, I was walking 30K a day or yeah. 192 mile in 11 days. And I never thought I'd be able to do it. Carrying my gear, but but I did it. And it was the, it tops Kilimanjaro. It's the best, really? um, look, best thing I've ever done. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. I love it because I've got a whole list of questions that I've planned out and all those questions at the moment, I'm like, forget that <laughs> because I've got a whole load of other ones I want to now ask. So the first thing is, why do you think that was the, the best thing you've ever done then? What made that particular adventure, what made that particular journey something that really resonated with you? You know, I'm, I'm quite well known in the hiking community because I've done it a while. I run a few of the Facebook groups and things, so I'm yeah. quite, quite well known and people know. I'm a solo hiker. I love being on my own, you know, doing doing a challenge, doing big hikes, things like that. And it's always about been about solo for me. I help run some groups. I have been on some group hikes and, and I actually run my own now, which I really, really enjoy. But at the time, I didn't always go on the group hikes because people go slow or, you know, I'm not unsociable, very sociable, but I just decided that they kind of weren't for me. Mm-hmm. Now, the coast to coast, one of the main things I took away from that was the people that you meet. There's a guy now, I did the Dales Way last year with a guy that I met on the coast to coast. Uh, I've met really good, good friends out of it. The people that you stop, you talk to them. What's their story? What's their experience? And some people you might stick with for the whole event. Like, you know, you'll walk on your own and then that yeah. night you might bump into them again. You might overtake each other a few times. And for me, I took away that actually people, people make this. Yeah. I want to do the coast to coast again. Um, I'll probably do it again this year. I'm nervous about doing it because I know it won't be the same experience and it was so good last time. The other thing is the challenge as well. I never thought I'd be able to do anything like that. You're walking through some beautiful areas, the Lake District. Um, it's a renowned walk. It's something on a lot of people's bucket list. So you know that you, you know, you, you're doing this. You've got to camp. You've got to work out how to carry your things. You, you've got to you know, yeah. plan the room, the weather. There's loads and loads of things in it. And I just love that uh, I just love that challenge. It's that thing though. We quite often as as humans, we get very, we get very kind of attached and we form habits very easily. We tend to go back to the same places. A lot of people, they'll go into a restaurant. They look at the menu. Nine times out of 10, those people know exactly what they're going to pick because they never look at the menu and they eat exactly the same thing. You go abroad, they eat the same thing. Instead of going, no, I want to try different things. I want to experiment. But it's clear that you're that person that goes, no, I want to experiment. I want to try these different things. And there's nothing wrong with every once in a while going back and kind of going towards that same event. And I think that's great that you are going to go back and try something new, but also that you you loved it because it had that challenge. It had that that kind of trepidation that, can I do this? Can I achieve it? That That excitement of this is going to be tough, but I can feel like it's going to fulfill part of Part of part of you, part of your soul. Kilimanjaro, for example, you know that was. I mean, that was amazing at, at the time. Don't get me wrong. We actually got no views. You know, we were above the cloud. All I saw was it was like being on a plane. You know, for the whole thing, I just saw a cloud below us. <laughs> amazing experience. But again, it was the people. You know, the people you meet and things like that. So, and don't for, don't forget. I know it's still a challenge, and you've still got to get to the top, etc. But you walk in as a group, and everyone's you know it's coordinated. You're getting up here. You're camping here. You're doing this. We're walking this far. You're going slowly. You haven't got this on this. You know, I didn't know how long it was going to take to do it. I kind of had an idea. I had 10 days in my head. No idea why. I did it on the morning of the 11th day. I could have finished it in 10. You know, and, and again, everyone focuses on the, do it in this many days. I've done it in nine. I've done it in 12. And I learned again, it's not important. Just experience it and take your time. Now, I did rush a little bit, but I enjoyed it. But the people you meet, the, the places you can go, it, oh, it's, it's, oh, I loved it. <laughs> you probably tell them that, you know, I, I recommend anyone trying it and you will achieve it. You will get around it if it takes you three weeks. But that's what we want. We want people to experience stuff. So, okay. So another thing is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to have to make you think of uh, like limit this though. So someone who's obviously done lots of lengthier and more endurance based events, you've done a lot of tough challenges, multi-day challenges and stages. What would you say would be maybe to someone who's coming into this, maybe someone who's taking on the Apex Challenge for the their first kind of ever big multi-day thing, big challenge. What would you say would be kind of three pieces of kit that have been your absolute like go-to, your realizations of, you know what, that 
is worth its weight in gold. Those are three pieces of kit that I wouldn't be without on on a tough right. event. I think of two straight away, but I don't okay. have to come back to the second one. So the first one I'm going to say is your boots, <laughs> right? Because I switched many, many years ago. When I went to did my um, Kilimanjaro or my Snowden, I bought this yeah. big pair of um, uh, a solo um, flame boots. You know, they took crampons. They were, every, they were amazing. Uh, I spent like £140 on them, half price at the time. I had them for 12 years. I used to love right. them until they eventually had no grip left and I had to buy something new. And when I decided to do that Yorkshire Three Peaks, I bought a pair of Adidas Terex Free Hiker GTX. Anyone who follows me knows I, I love these shoes. They're a game changer for me. I used to have a little bit of hip pain when I used to walk after a while and I put it okay. down to having boots and things. People have trail runners. Again, not for me. I don't want wet feet. I don't care if my boots dry, you know, they dry quickly. I don't want wet feet. Since I bought these... They go on. I use them for every single hike, apart from winds. I've just got some some uh, chunkier ones. But, you know, I can move quickly. They're comfy. That's the key. They've got cushioning yeah. on the sole because heels, when you're walking on different terrain, they take a battering. So for me, you get the best pair of shoes that fit you and are comfy that are not heavy. And for me, it's Adidas okay. Terex. Secondly, a water filter. I don't like carrying water. It's heavy, <laughs> but... Again, Yorkshire Three Peaks, I ran out of water. I forgot my filter, and it was a nightmare. I had, it was the hottest day of the year, and I had no water for the last two peaks. It, you know, it was really tough. So everywhere I go, I have a Catadin B3 water filter. Used to have a 600ml. Now I've got a one-litre one. It's amazing. goes on every hike, every camp. Keep that with you. You could fill it out of a puddle if you had to, and you could filter it and drink your water. Number three... Oh, I don't know. I'm a YouTuber. I've got to say my GoPro. Because for me, it's not. A, it's about the hike. It's all about the hike and the camp. You know, it's all about enjoying it. But if I can capture it while I'm doing yeah. it and I've got a record of what I've done and I can, it's always there for you know my daughter to see or me to look back on, that's important. I want to be able to capture what I've done. So those three things. In fact, I'm going to throw one more in. Link it to the water. Sorry. Electrolytes. Yes. Electrolytes. Nice electrolytes. I had on my on race last year, I forgot my bag of electrolytes and I struggled with cramp. I use them for every single hike because I don't drink enough water, admittedly, but drop an electrolyte in, I have one in the morning, one at night, game changer. Cramping I can I can deal with I have to take salt tablets with me now as well. Because when I've done like my triathlons and things, I can sweat quite a lot and I was finding I was getting rings of salt and stuff. And I tried to bend down at one point to go, oh, I need to give my quads a bit of a stretch. Tried to bend my leg back and was like, no, I'm gonna cramp, I'm gonna cramp and I couldn't do it. When I did the OM last year, I did it with Andy from Backpack in UK and, and I felt like I was holding him back because I was cramping. I was cramping in my chest, I was cramping in my legs, literally never had cramps or bad. I was struggling to walk at times because of electrolytes and a few people on the trail give me some of theirs which which helped which kicked me on so yeah, yeah i'll never see those again top tip to make sure you take your electrolytes with you okay one of the other things as well that i kind of wanted to to ask you a little bit about and we've seen i've seen a little bit of this in 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 your your socials at times and i think i know you said that you've you've done a little video on this now as well is one of the key things for a lot of us getting outside getting in the fresh air trying to get in the sunshine a big thing for a lot of people is trying to use hiking getting outdoors for improving our mental health i know you were saying at the beginning of this year you'd struggle with mental health a little bit but you found that there are some ways that you've kind of used what you're doing to try to to fight against that and trying to get you back into a routine i wonder if you could just kind of let like kind of tell us like how this helps you with your kind of mental health i think it's twofold i think you need to push yourself to do what you're passionate about because when you go out and do it you're going to feel so much better mm. but that's only half the battle you know a lot of people message me and say oh you know you've really inspired me to do this i, I see you so passionate and, I, and i've got out and i've done this and sometimes i feel like a fraud because i struggled myself to to get out i want to hike I want to go out, you know, I've got my bag down here somewhere. I, my bag's always packed, ready to go. I, and many a time I've packed it at night, set me alarm, made my food, got everything ready, got up the next morning and I just can't get out. I don't even really know what it is. And I think I mentioned Stephen Reed on YouTube posted a video recently about SAD syndrome and this time of the year, the darker nights, not getting vitamin D. I work kind of work for myself at the moment, so I, I don't see that many people. I'm always in. And I think you can get yourself stuck in a rut. It's going to be different for everyone, but for me, I think what you should, what you need to do is plan to go with somebody else because you can't let them down. Then 
for me, it was my girlfriend. We'd planned to go on a hike. You know, I was still planning the route at midnight the night before. I know if I was on my own, I wouldn't have gone the next day. And it's kickstarted me back on. And now I've been out on solo wild camp, you know, last week. I can't wait to go on my next one. But it's about pushing yourself to get out. You will feel better, you know, with other people, you know, just with one friend. You don't have to go as a group. It's, It's difficult. It's a difficult thing, mental health. But doing what you enjoy. And if you're struggling to get out, reach out to somebody else and baby steps, if you like, just just to get out. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a big thing. And obviously, if there are people that are watching this that are tuned, and, and maybe, you know, you haven't done lots of hiking before, you're trying to get into it, you've signed up for the Apex, maybe you're not quite confident enough to plan your own routes or something like that. I can pretty much assume that you would back me up and say, you don't necessarily have to go the most complicated routes, the biggest peaks or anything. Just get yourself outside, get your bodies moving and start that process of, of getting going. Because once you start, like you said, it builds that momentum. It builds that progress. It builds that want, that fire. Exactly what you said is correct. In a way, I'm I'm the opposite. I I find that if I've not got something meaty or something to, you know, if I'm going to go to the Lake District, a few times I've come and just recently just done one peak, done a camp and come down. That's very rare for me. I, yeah. I feel like I'm under. A, I feel like if I've not ticked six weight rights off, it's a waste of time for me. And then. People have said, oh, just go local. And I think, what's the point? You know, it's not going to. But I think I think you've, you've just got to do that. You've just got to get out. If you need yeah. yourself a, because I think sometimes you can overface yourself. You can think, oh, yeah. I've got to do all that. And it's the dread of, oh, my God, I can't, I can't be bothered to drive two hours to get there. And, you know. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it can be difficult, but it does so much for us. And it's it's an amazing thing. So. Let's dive in really quickly now. So <clears throat> talking of meaty hikes and meaty things, the Apex Challenge. Here we go. Two days nonstop up and down Helvella. Now, you're, I'm right, so you're not doing this as an individual, are you? You're actually doing it as part of a team? Yeah, I'm doing it as a team of four. <laughs> it's probably something I'm pushed to do on my own, but I, I, I thought, thought it was a good opportunity to do it with three good friends. And uh, yeah, it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be a good challenge. I think it'll be really exciting because I think one of the things that's quite nice about the team element of it is you can do it. You could, well, I mean, you can all hike up as four if you want to, but what also is you can have two going up and then two resting at the same time. So it means that you can really kind of challenge pace options and things like that as well. But I was kind of interested to ask you kind of how you feel about the idea of doing it as a team, knowing that most of the time you're predominantly a solo hiker. You like to do things on your own and, Yes, you interact with people on hike, but how do you feel thinking about the event as it's going to be a bit of a team one? Does it create a bit of sort of nervous excitement going, oh, this is going to be something that's actually going to mentally challenge me a bit more being part of that group? Or well, I can't say I'm not phased. I'm, the whole challenge, trust me, it phases me. <laughs> you know, I know one of our team guys is, he'll be running up there, <laughs> you know. And the thing is, if you're going up in twos, it's putting pressure on. That's putting pressure on some of the person who's going with him. Some people will walk slower, some will walk quicker. And I know that some people might have to take more legs than the, than the other yeah. guys as well. So, yeah, I'm, I don't know how it's how it's going to pan out, but I'm putting pressure on myself because I don't want to be, not that anyone would let us down, but I don't want to give a bad account of myself. Yeah. So even if only someone can only do two and someone's got to do four, that's fine as long as you give a good account of yourself. So that's that's where the pressure is, I think. I've listened to quite a few adventure racing books and things like that as well. Are you guys going to try to maybe meet up a couple of times pre-race and do a couple of hikes, or are you guys going to go cold turkey, meet up on the day and go, here's our plan, off we go? Well, I'm hoping that's not the case. But, yeah, I, I do want to meet up beforehand. So, you know, a bit of a training run, maybe we go up and down twice in a day, which, you know, and yeah. do a wild camp or something, it'd be great. Andy... One of the guys I'm doing it with, I did the OM race with him last year. Mm-hmm. Now, we're doing the OM again this year. Oh, I think it's after this one, actually. I think it's in November. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll probably do another event as well. We'll probably try and yeah. sneak another one in early in the year to, to get a little bit of practice. So, yeah. <laughs> Still t- staying on the kind of the topic of, of Apex and stuff, there's a couple of questions that we tend to ask everyone. So, is there a particular memory across all of the different hikes you've done that really stands out and that sort of says to you, do you know what? That was a moment for me that I, I just will never forget, and, and like why it was so special. Possibly when I did my, um, I did the Cumbria Way uh, last year, and I did it in 
I did the Dales Way, and then two weeks after, I decided to do the Cumbria Way solo. God knows why. And I planned it over four days, and I did it in three. <laughs> My last day, I did 50, 55 kilometres. I was walking for 12 hours. I didn't finish to laugh eight at night. Honestly, I felt like crying at one stage. It was, it was you know, I filmed it on my, on my GoPro, and it's all very nice on your GoPro, but, oh, listen, it was a, it was a challenge, and I, and I never, I never thought I'd be able to do that. I thought I was going to struggle doing the event anyway, so close after the last one. My legs yeah. were in bits. And even though no one will see this, I never really filmed it, but, you know, I, I was almost emotional for the first time, and it was probably the first time ever I can say, Maybe wow. the coast to coast that I was proud. I'd never say it out loud to somebody. I've just said it now, but that I was I was actually thought, God, I'm I'm proud of what I've done there. I'd never big myself up or accept praise normally, but for the first time ever, I thought, God, I've I've done all right there. You know, I can't believe I've done it. You know, Didn't get home till one in the morning. You know, it was it's a long day. For me, that that makes me happy personally. Disregard anyone that might be watching this. For me personally, <laughs> hearing you say that you're proud of yourself knowing now that it's something that you maybe don't say or don't struggle with. Because I'm a huge advocate of people giving themselves praise because we're very happy as a society to kind of berate ourselves and go, oh, you didn't do that quick enough. You weren't fast enough. You, you didn't try hard enough. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. You didn't do this. Whereas it's very difficult for a lot of us to go, do you know what? Well done, mate. You really stuck it out. So I'm going to say well done. Well done, mate. That's really cool. Thank you. I've done I've so, before and I just find that I find it very difficult I think if someone yeah. says oh you've done well I, I disregard it I, you know come my girlfriend giving me a compliment come here I, 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 I've really struggled with it and especially myself I'm you know I never back myself I, you know I'm very weird like that but yeah the, probably the first time I've ever thought god I've done pretty I've done all right there and that's yeah. the thing sometimes it takes moments like that for us to start realizing that so who who knows where it'll go from there so the two questions that we we, we normally try to ask everyone when they're doing um, like our apex challenges that we always want to say to them, if someone was thinking about kind of signing up for the apex challenge or someone was thinking about doing it, they've just signed up and they're not quite sure, what, what kind of advice would you give to someone if they were thinking about doing the apex challenge? If you're thinking about doing it, you've already got it in there that you want to do it sign up <laughs> first look because if you keep thinking about it i'm telling you you won't do it like what we said earlier on i'm known for being hiker everyone says god you're dead fit i don't go to the gym sit on my backside in here most of the time if i'm not out but when i hike i go i tend to go on a big hike now i'm doing the challenge i've signed up for it i've never done anything like that before the coast to coast things yeah great you know i've, I've done that event but it's totally different. You've got to walk a long way one day, but then you get to sleep at night, rest and do it again. So just challenge yourself. You've not failed if you don't get up there nine times if you're doing it solo. It's not a competition against other people in my eyes. You're going to have a really good experience. Just give a good account of yourself. Sign up. I know there's been a lot of advice. I watched the live stream on air about going to the gym and training, and I probably advise you to do all that. I probably won't be doing that. I'll just stick with my hiking and, and keep getting up the mountains. You know, it, it works for me. But it's what works uh, for you. And that's the thing. Yeah. It's what works for you. I'm the one lying down with cramp on the hill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you do see Chris lying down, just give his legs a little rub for him and just drop an electrolyte tablet in his mouth. A little bit of water and he'll be fine. Okay. So the final two things. So what does Apex mean to you in one word? If you had to sum up the Apex challenge in one word, what would that word be? The pinnacle. The top of, of what you can do. The biggest you know, the biggest challenge. This isn't the biggest mountain. It's not the longest amount of days, but it's a big challenge doing it so many times under, with so little rest in the dark. You know, I've never done anything like that before. So yeah, pinnacle. It's a Brilliant. That's a great word. And then the final question is, what is your Everest? With me, it's just to keep pushing myself and challenging myself. And so, for example, you know, I think I might want to do the coast to coast again. I'll do the Highland Way, and, and I'm looking for all the long distance hikes. Maybe it's I want to see how many of these I can do in what period. You know, I think mine is just pushing myself to achieve things that I didn't think I could achieve. And I actually want to do Everest Base Camp. I've got a love of Everest. I, I read everything about it. I'm fascinated with it, so I do want to do that as well. <laughs> awesome, Chris. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. It's been wonderful. Yeah, Thank you so much, mate. I really, really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you so much for tuning in on that latest interview series. It's been an absolute pleasure. If you haven't signed up for the Everest Challenge, the Apex Challenge, go on to the link on our websites and sign up now. It is going to be one heck of a ride. And we'll catch you on the next one.